She is too bold. Hi guys, how are you all doing? Your boy Al is here with episode 12 review of Ashinoko season 2 so let's jump into it. At first we see a scene where Serena and Gora share a moment, then the scene shifts back to the present. Ruby, Mimcho, and Kana listen to the song Hamira made for them. Later, we see Mimcho walking at night, calling her friend Anemone. Mimcho talks about Hamira's song, and Anemone suggests they film a music video of Mimcho and her friends performing it in Miyazaki. Mimcho feels unsure, but Anemone reassures her, and Mimcho decides to discuss the idea with Miyako. The scene then cuts to Kana at the airport, unhappy that Akane is joining them for Miyazaki. Ruby greets Akane warmly, expressing hope that she and Aqua will marry someday. Finally, Aqua and his friends arrive in Takachio, a town in Miyazaki. Many people might have overlooked this small detail, but Memcho seems to be slightly concerned about something, and I wonder what all this could possibly mean. Also Ruby brutally shot down Kana. We see Anemone greet the group. While Ruby examines the statues in the area, Anemone shares details about Takachio with Kana and the others, mentioning the goddess of performing arts. Aqua confirms the deity is called Ain no Yuzum no Makoto. Anemone explains that people love to worship this deity, known for bringing good luck. Kana expresses interest in visiting the shrine, but Anemone insists they focus on filming the music videos. Anemone, Kana, and the others leave Akane and Aqua behind. Akane suggests visiting Amano Wado's shrine, but Aqua proposes they go to a hospital instead, explaining its significance to him and Ruby. At the hospital, Aqua speaks to a female worker and asks about Goru, but she returns moments later with no information. I didn't realize at first that Miyazaki was Aqua and Ruby's hometown in their previous lives, but them coming here now could prove to be a very interesting turning point for the story. Also Aqua trying to investigate his past life is pretty normal in my opinion, and I think most people would do the same. Moving on we see Aqua and Akane visit a hilltop where Aqua wants to find Gora's body but thinks it would be pointless. They then go to Gora's former home, where Aqua tells Akane that everyone who lived there passed away long ago. He explains who lived there and shares details about Gora's early ambitions as a surgeon, his relationship with his grandparents, and his efforts to adapt and fit in with others. A flashback follows, showing Gora is sitting next to Serena, who is ill in bed, while he holds an eye keychain that Serena won. The Crow Girl reflects on Aqua and Ruby's situation. Meanwhile, Anemone films Ruby, Mimcho, and Kana casually, and Mimcho discusses Anemone's filming style with Ruby. Kana adds her own thoughts. Later, Ruby, Kana, and Mimcho are seen at the set for the music video shoot. The little girl seems to know a lot about Ruby and Aqua's previous lives, and everything is hinting that she might be a supernatural being, but the story is so grounded in reality, except the reincarnation part obviously, that I don't think they will use such heavy supernatural elements. Then we see Aqua and Akane arrive and talk with Mimcho. Kana notices them nearby and shows off her outfit. Akane interrupts, adjusts Kana's outfit, and offers her some fashion advice. Kana asks Aqua if she looks cute, and he replies with a passing mark, leaving Kana disappointed. Anemone then takes photos of the group. Later, Aqua and Akane watch from a distance as Kana, Mimcho, and Ruby film their music video. Aqua believes Kana will be successful in the future. Akane advises Aqua to stop going on dates with Kana, warning that even a single wave of criticism could be disastrous for a popular idol. Aqua understands. After filming, Akane and Ruby go for a walk. Ruby spots a crow, which steals her room key, and she and Akane chase after it. As they walk, Ruby suggests Akane join Bikamichi, but Akane declines, saying being an idol wouldn't suit her. The Japanese idol industry is very strict about idols dating, which is pretty harsh for the idols in my opinion, but it's funny how Akane was giving Aqua advice, and at the same time making sure he won't be dating Kana. Also poor Memcho wasn't really happy about needing to work late at night. 
At the end we see Ruby share that she wants to pursue acting after reaching her idol goals. She asks Akane about age gaps and reveals details about the person she's in love with, mentioning that she doesn't know where he is but hopes to see him again someday. As they continue walking, Ruby and Akane discover a cave, and Akane suggests they leave when they notice a dead body inside. Ruby realizes the man is Goru, the person she had been talking about to Akane. Ruby's eyes grow dim with the realization. Now that they have found Goru's body, I wonder if the story will take a drastic turn, which will lead to Aqua and Ruby finding out about their past lives or something like that. By the way, Ruby is quite bold when it comes to expressing her feelings for Goru. Nevertheless, this was a pretty emotion-heavy episode that gave us more information about Ruby and Aqua's past lives. Anyways thanks for watching everyone. If you like my video then check out some of my other videos. Also don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you want to keep me motivated to make more videos, and you can also leave a comment if you want to say something, because it helps me fight the almighty YouTube algorithm, you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram or check out my Facebook page, links are given in the description until then see ya.